All right, welcome back to lecture number three in our eighth module in our summer series. This will wrap up our um, three lectures on um, logic and reasoning. We're going to get into now talking about different logical fallacies and ways in which we can think about um, forming cohesive arguments. So let's uh, get into a few of these that are important for research design and that certainly will become important when we start talking about things like decision making, particularly post hoc ergo propter hoc and sum hoc. So post hoc ergo propter hoc uh, is Latin for after, therefore, because of it. Um, essentially the post hoc fallacy is committed when it is assumed that because one thing occurred after another, it must have, recur occurred, of, must have occurred as a result of it. Um, and so th there are lots of different ways in which this surfaces, but essentially things like um, belief that vaccines cause autism because children have vaccines and then uh, that occurs at the point in the developmental timeline uh, right before symptoms of uh, autism start to emerge. Uh, there is a belief that one thing causes the other. Of course, nothing could be further from the truth. Vaccines do not cause autism. There is enormous amounts of research covering that. But that logical fallacy is still uh, committed often. And this is also a big part of what we call superstitious learning. So um, hockey players, for example, oftentimes are really superstitious. They will put on all of their gear in the same order. This shoe, skate, then that skate, this pad, then that pad, then, you know, whatever. Um, because they think it has something to do with their um, luck in the playoffs, for example. Uh, and so they're committing this logical fallacy that they've won because they've done all of these superstitious things. Sumhawk, very similar, it's just because two things happen at the same time, they must be causally related. Um, this is the kind of thing that happens when um, very quickly things happen at the same time, and we assume that the two must have caused another. So for example, you may have been um, uh, somewhere and a very loud noise occurs at the same time somebody gets up and you assume that the two are related and you try to figure out how things, those two things are related to one another um, when in fact they are completely unrelated. So these are both uh, very similar. Uh, and we'll talk about how um, this can result in some decision-making errors, in particular in uh, what is called illusory correlation uh, because we think things are occurring together we believe they're related, and that's in fact how stereotyping and uh, racial bias often uh, is formed. Other important logical fallacies, uh, particularly those that go along with research design, are things like hasty generalization and sweeping generalization. Hasty generalization usually tries to draw a general rule from a single, perhaps atypical case. Um, and you see this all the time. Um, you have one um, refugee who commits a crime and now all refugees are, are criminals. That's a hasty generalization. Uh, a sweeping generalization then is the opposite where we try to use a general rule to apply to a single case. Um, so now let's say we've decided um, all refugees are criminals through hasty generalization. Um, now we're going to apply that to every single individual we meet. Uh, and again, you see this a lot with stereotyping. So let's say there's stereotypes about uh, gay men. And so you have this general belief about gay men being less masculine. And so now you apply that to every single gay man that you meet. That would be a sweeping generalization because you've swept up that one individual with this general rule that you believe. The slippery slope, slope fallacy. Uh, this one is uh, constantly occurring. We falsely assume that one thing must lead to another. We're legalizing marijuana. It's a slippery slope. Next thing you know, we're going to be legalizing cocaine and heroin. Um, all of these things, you know, marijuana leads you to do all these bad things. That's not true. Um, so this idea that one thing must lead to another, that there's this sort of slippery slope, is not entirely true. Um, in fact, it's very rarely true. Um, ad populum, or what we call the bandwagon fallacy, is committed be, by arguments that appeal to the growing popularity of an idea as a reason for accepting it as true. And we make this all the time in the United States in particular. We are obsessed with polls, we're accept with, uh, obsessed with what everyone believes to be true or what everyone believes to be right. Um, and in fact, simply because something is believed by a lot of people does not make it true and does not make uh, an argument tr to be true. And that's something we have to 
um, be very mindful of, particularly in these media-driven times. So that then gets us to um, understanding the anatomy of an argument, evaluating the strength of an argument, and then we'll talk about reasoning versus rationalizing, and then get into some common argument of fallacies. So the first thing to understand uh, in understanding the anatomy of an argument uh, are a number of things to think about. So premises are premises are the reasons that support a conclusion, the why of an argument. And so you set up a series of premises uh, about an argument. So let's say you uh, are arguing for um, single payer health care and you outline all the reasons why you think that's that should be done. And then the conclusion is the what of the argument. Because based on all of these premises, all this evidence I've provided for you, we conclude that single payer health care uh, is the way to go. So that would be the conclusion, the belief or point of view that is supported by the premises. Now oftentimes we have to include assumptions. Um, these are statements with no proof or evidence offered. Sometimes they're implied or unstated, and this is oftentimes a very weak part of an argument. We assume people will sign up for it, we assume people will go in for preventative care, we assume people want this, that sort of thing. Uh, qualifiers are a constraint or a restriction on the conclusion. So for example, you might say this is only true if the following things occur. So qualifying uh, these on that conclusion. And then finally, counter arguments uh, are of course statements that refute or weaken a conclusion. So you come up with counter arguments generally against the premises or that the conclusion doesn't flow logically from the premises. So this is why I set up this um, series of uh, lectures by starting with logical uh, statements and seeing how you can make a logical conclusion uh, based on the evidence and the premises and whether or not it all it all comes together. And so you can attack the uh, logic of an argument uh, and say, well, the conclusion, even if we assume all these premises are true, um, the conclusion doesn't logically flow from that. So when we evaluate the strength of an argument, the first thing we have to look at are, are the premises acceptable? That is, do they have sufficient evidence? Um, do, are they believable? Are they consistent with one another? Are the source of these premises credible? That is, where does the evidence come from? Uh, does it come from uh, an academic uh, research center? Does it come from a political party? Does it come from potentially politically biased news sources? Um, so thinking about whether or not the source of those premises is credible. And then finally, do the premises provide adequate grounds for the conclusion? That is, do they provide sufficient uh, argumentative power to reach the conclusion um, that we are asked to believe. So the first thing we look at here is are the premises. Do they make sense? Are they consistent? Um, that is, are they not contradicting each other? Um, are the sources credible? And do the premises provide the adequate grounds for the conclusion? That is, have we provided enough evidence to say, yes, this conclusion is valid? That then gets us to thinking about reasoning versus rationalizing. When we rationalize, we attend to the information that supports a preferred conclusion. That is, we simply pay attention to those things that are consistent with our beliefs, and then um, we rationalize. We say, well, that's what I believe, so that's got to be true. Whereas when you reason, you say, all right, well, here's evidence from both sides. Let's weigh which argument we think, which evidence we believe more, uh, and then make a conclusion based on the available data. So re reasoning is a much more nuanced, much more effortful um, process by which we think about what are the reasons why I believe this. And I find one of the most useful things is to just discuss these issues out with my friends and say, all right, well, here's what people say. You know, why do we believe this? What's what's our rational? You know, what what do we believe is the reason behind all of this? In you know, kind of way. Um, different pieces of evidence and different arguments and then make our own conclusions. So reasoning is a much better uh, strategy. Almost everything you read or hear, keep in mind, has been designed to per persuade you to do or believe something, particularly in this crazy insane time that we live in. Um, so we have to think about uh, trying to keep our heads on our shoulders and think about the reasons we believe things and think about what does the evidence tell us? Because often we are conf confronted with propaganda, which is often charged with appeals to emotion rather than reason. The entire anti-vaccine um, movement is based on propaganda. It's charged with appeals to emotion. There's absolutely no logic behind it. There's no reason behind it. Um, anytime you try to bring logic or reason into the argument, um, 
it, it, you're confronted again with some sort of propaganda based on emotion. And of course, that's not the only area um, where this is true, um, but keep that in mind. So think about rational reasoning based arguments and thinking about what is the best way forward. So now that gets us to some um, common fallacies people use in arguments. And it's certainly important to be able to look out for these. So the first of these are association effects. Simply guilt by association or virtue by association. They're both, one's just as bad as the other. Um, so simply because um, someone is associated with a party or they're associated with a particular person or institute means they're either guilty or virtuous by that association. And I think that's an important thing uh, to watch out for. And we do this all the time. Um, you know, oh, they're a member of the NRA, so they must be this, that, or the other. Or, oh, they're a member of the ACLU, so um, they're guilty of these things. Uh, we have to watch out for that kind of thing. Um, that gets us right to then our argumentum ad hominem. Um, these are arguments based on irrelevant information about the source of information. These are basically personal attacks. So anytime uh, ad hominem attacks are coming out, um, well, you just don't like people, and you're just a hateful person, and you're bad, and blah, blah. So uh, you want to really watch out for that, because you see this all the time. Um, you know, Rather than attacking the argument, they attack the person. And that's when you know um, you have a weak argument is when you are attacking the person. And that's what happened in the 2016 election. There was all sorts of ad hominem attacks about um, Hillary Clinton. And so it's something to watch out for. Appeals to pity, basically what it just sounds like. Feel sorry for them. Um, pity this poor, poor person or this poor thing. Uh, doesn't really uh, provide any logical basis for their um, conclusion. So of course, popularity is another um, common problem. This is the bad wagon or ad populum fallacy we talked about earlier. Watch out for testimonials, particularly individuals, celebrity or otherwise, who lend their support to an idea. Um, Dr. Oz is the worst uh, person to uh, watch or try to even think about believing in because uh, he provides these testimonials with no scientific backing. You want to contrast that with an expert opinion. And an expert opinion is somebody who understands the science. They understand, uh, they know what they're talking about. They're not just simply saying, oh, I joined Jenny Craig and I feel great. They're saying, you know, here's the science behind this diet. Here's the science behind um, this particular treatment. Uh, all of those are things to keep in mind. Testimonials are no way to gain truth. And in fact, they're a time-honored uh, way in which people can get uh, jilted by snake oil salesmen. So, um, other fallacies to watch out for include false dichotomy. Um, this is presented as if there are only two possible alternatives, so we have to cut spending or we have to raise taxes. Well, that's false dichotomy. Those are the only two choices. Growing the economy is a way in which to increase revenue um, or deficit spend or whatever, but those are not the only two choices. Uh, appeals to pride or snobbery, that's just, you know, basically, well, you know, if you're a good person, you would do this. You know, good people, smart people do this. <laughs> um, another thing to watch out for is called card stacking or suppressed information, and it omits information unfavorable to their view. Of course, people do this all the time. Classic example, people who switch to GEICO save $450. Well, nobody switches their insurance if they're not going to save money. So the people who didn't switch, their insurance was probably going to go up if they switched to GEICO. And so it's pre presenting only one part of the equation. And so you have to watch out for that. Circular reasoning, or what we call tautological reasoning. Um, you see this all the time. Or people are think, say, well, we talked about this under the levels of processing uh, idea. Um, but it's basically circular. It's the whole levels of processing um, theory was criticized for its um, tautological reasoning. Uh, deeper processing results in better memory. It's better memory because it's deeper processing. We know it's deeper processing because it shows better memory. So it's pretty clear circular reasoning. Uh, non sequiturs are things that are completely irrelevant that people try to bring in. Oh, this is all the time. Um, politicians and their spokespeople 
are constantly trying to keep things on their talking points. And so rather than answering the questions, they'll answer with a non sequitur. So something that's completely irrelevant, but they wanted to say. Um, the slippery slope, of course, we've already talked about. A straw person argument is when you take make a relevant point, but then make it weak and easy to talk now, or knock down. And so you take something that's nearly on point, but it's the weakest part of the argument and knock it down, and then you make it sound like the entire argument is invalid because of that straw person argument. Um, part whole fallacies. This is where syllogistic reasoning comes in. Whatever is true of the whole is true of its parts, and whatever is true of a part is true of the whole. Um, that's never the case, um, certainly, and this is where we see um, the sweeping and hasty generalizations we talked about earlier. Uh, appeals to ignorance is another um, example. Well, where's the proof of that? Um, absence of evidence is not evidence for a conclusion. Um, and so simply because there isn't evidence doesn't mean you can provide any sort of conclusion. Uh, inappropriate analogies, you have to watch to make sure that the analogies actually line up. Um, we see that a lot. Appeals to authority. Hollywood political endorsements, Dr. Oz, Jenny McCarthy, these are people who for some reason we think we should listen to when in fact uh, they are oftentimes giving us terrible advice. Uh, incomplete comparisons is another thing to watch out for. Uh, people often don't tell us what they're comparing something to. Um, and so they'll sort of make this idea about comparisons that doesn't line up. Uh, knowing the unknowable, you know, people will often try to make claims about how they know something uh, when in fact uh, it is something that is unknowable. Uh, false cause, so that is, this is where we get the, you know, things like post hoc ergo propter hoc and sum hoc. Um, assuming because two things are related together, they must be causal. This is something to watch out for when we talk about things like correlation coefficients and correlational research. Uh, Put-downs, um, arguing that thinking or agreeing with a position makes you stupid or unpatriotic. See this all the time. Um, I think it's really unhelpful. Oh, you voted for that person? Well, you're stupid. Um, how could you do that? That's not very patriotic. Um, that's something I think to really watch out for. And then finally, appeals to, tradi to tradition. The most dangerous phrase in the English language is we've always done it this way. Um, and I think that is uh, no reason other than the fact that people don't like change. And so we'll finish with that as our last common argumentative fallacy. Our next, next lecture, we'll pick up and talk about problem solving.